Everybody who knew him was his friend. Most creative person I've ever met. Jimmy was uh, was one of my very best friends. So uh, he's somebody I miss a uh, great deal. Never spur a horse when he's swimming. <laughs> Wisdom from Jimmy. Good guy. Good yeah. guy. Yeah, he was a neat guy. And, uh, an artist, a philosopher, uh, and uh, somebody you can trust. Was the purest artist I had ever met. No one other than Jimmy knew everything about art. Very creative person. Uh, Jimmy was the type of person who could make something out of nothing. A wonderful human soul that had a great artistic ability and great sense of humor and a dear friend. Now that is a testimony. I mean, this is a guy who touched each and every one of us. So much magic in his hands and wisdom coming from that mind. We were each touched by him. And it's true that, you know, sometimes you kind of forget little things about your co-worker, but never the dreamer or the friend. This isn't about us. It's about him. You see all that stuff up there? Now, in television, we call that a lighting grid. And no matter what program you see, if it's indoors or outside, the person who sets up and controls that lighting influences what you see and how you see it. And for us, that person was always Jimmy Graham. He had a very visual eye of what television can and should look like. Uh, he would take something and put it together and you look at it with the naked eye and you say, well, what are you doing? This, this won't work. And then when you look through it through the camera, it's just what you expect it to be. When I came out of college and cinematography school, I thought I was, you know, I knew about lighting, I knew about composition yeah, and all that. But, you know, you kind of had to prove yourself to Jimmy, and he didn't give you compliments when you thought, you know, somebody appreciate what you were doing and unless you did you know if you if you if he got a compliment from Jimmy you knew you were doing something right he was probably one of the most creative people at our television station everything in our production department his caricatures were priceless he had wit and insight into political matters and he was just a great human being he was a little bit, uh, had an off-the-wall sense of humor. I remember one time he talked, to, he had a, one of these cartoons that he drew. There was one in the studio, something about one, you know, will work, we'll work for food, and another one has a sign that says, we'll lie for money. Jimmy was always thinking of tinkering and doing something, you know, where, where his mind was so active and always thinking of things in, in ways that nobody else was ever thinking of. It wasn't just the set and the studio lighting that Jimmy worked on every day. With every one of his creations and every new idea, he really worked on people. My fond memories of Jimmy would be um, time that we spent talking about our grandkids, believe it or not, not television or anything else. Um, he, his little grandsons were pretty close to the same age as my grandchildren, and so besides discussing ways that we could take over the world and, and politically change it to our own way of thinking. Um, it was really more about uh, the kids and, uh, you know, our kids and, and their uh, wonderful abilities to raise their own, uh, raise their children and how we were proud of them and that kind of thing, you yeah. And he comes up with this. He incited Jimmy Graham with apologies to Lichtenstein, of course. <laughs> but at least he signed it. Yeah. And I don't even remember, remember if we had a camera five then. <laughs> really? Yeah. I guess we did. 
I don't, I don't know. We went into a Burger King and he pretended to be a guy from Africa who couldn't speak English and I tried to describe french fries to him at the counter and I gave him one and he spit it out. After we were on a long shoot, we'd stop at Starbucks and I'd get an iced grande americano. He would always get a bag of chocolate covered espresso beans and eat them all himself. He would never speak to me just in a regular way. You know, in one example, he walked in the uh, weather office and there was a couple of us in there one day and he was like, hello, weather minions. You know, one, you know, one of those. And I'm like, what are you talking about? No weather minion. <laughs> Nothing was off limits with our joking and once you, you know, no matter what you did to him or what he did to us, you know, it was that, oh, you got me moment. You see what I'm talking about? Everybody who knew and worked with Jimmy Graham loved him. I mean, every single day he came up with something that was new and creative and, and, and different. And I think that's one of the reasons that we all miss him. But I'm going to be honest with you. That's, that's, that's only half the Jimmy Graham that all of us knew. There was this other half who was a more unusual and different half that was harder to get to know. And that half called himself Sani Mamba. He had an eye for um, any kind of art. He had light. He, he could design sets like no one else. But he also had a mouth. He wasn't afraid to use it. And he would always say whatever was on his mind. And he didn't matter to him who he upset in the process. I was scared of him at first. He, uh, see, early on, he kind of had his militant side. He always wore this uh, uh, knit, uh, wool knit cap. I mean, it's summer, and we're out on the shoots. He's got the wool knit cap, and he had a great fro under it. That was just kind of his, his, I don't know, symbol or something. He even told me once, back when, he even thought about changing his name to the X. He was that serious about, I guess, politics. He didn't drive a car. He, uh, his, his politics were very progressive, um, and he, uh, looked at the world uh, in a very liberal way, but at the same time uh, uh, with a very open mind about everything. His presence was so strong, and uh, he definitely chose his time when to speak up, but whenever Jimmy was around, you knew that there was a level head and a keen eye, and, and nothing was going to get by him or past him. Well, he was hard to place, I suppose. He was, at one point, your brother, at another point, your adversary. Uh, at one time, he would be, uh, he could ridicule you gently, but at the same time, uh, I don't know, he had a way of smoothing things out. He always had a habit of, well, he always told me that he started every day telling somebody, how are you doing? You can say hi to anybody, but he wants to know what how you're doing. And he meant it. And he meant it because he felt that that carried a lot more weight. He didn't like raisins or shrimp, so I never made him any uh, raisin <laughs> shrimp bread. He was an artist and, and a gentleman and a radical. And uh, he was very outspoken, but he was also very discreet when you, when, uh, when you had your confidence. Mm -hmm. You can search the halls for Jimmy Graham these days and come up with nothing. Unless you know where to look. The secret places where his touch can still be found. Little nooks and crannies, walls and spaces. And the hearts in which he mixed skill and wisdom. And instilled in everybody who knew him. A little light. Jimmy gave this to you. Oh yeah, uh, I was quite proud of this actually. <laughs> the Williamsburg Institute of Imposing Looking Fake Documents. <laughs> and it is, it is rather officious looking. Uh -huh. and, and you notice the detail that he goes into here. If you see in disfocus here, it says bogus right across the middle. <laughs> which is right up Jimmy's alley, that was perfect. But, uh, signed by someone who's connected, a registered voter, and a passerby. So obviously this is an official Sani Mamba foundation document.
I'm very proud. <laughs> well, I claimed the cup because I'd given it to him, but I haven't taken anything out of here. I mean, what am I going to do with it? I guess it's a mat cutter. An exact, I mean, you know, it's just Jimmy stuff. So. And the end of an old belt. <laughs> I'm sure he thought, well, I can use that for something. So I don't know, you know. Very large bin of paper, but I just don't have the heart to throw anything away. Yeah, a guy like that leaves a mark. You know, the people around him, uh, the place he, he worked at. Uh, this is really a man of deep principle. Yes, oh absolutely. And that's why I appreciate him so much. Because he and I would get to share these things of truth, beauty, and goodness. He was like a, a, a big brother. I just felt that if I ever got in a situation where I needed to ask him or go to him, that he would be there for me. Kind of jokingly was on my shirt, Honor and Virtue, is Jimmy was one of the most honorable people that I've ever known and he held the moral uh, code for us and um, something that has been sorely missed since Jimmy's been gone. He, he was brilliant. He was an artist with light. Everything I know about lighting I learned from Jimmy. Uh, mostly I, I remember his sense of humor and the fact that if you knew him, he was your friend. 